In this video, I'm gonna straighten this wall and we're gonna do it right now. So I have been doing a bunch of work in my hallway here. I'm in the framing stage and it may be hard to tell from standing back here, but this wall is crooked. And the way you can really tell is if you look at the tile. If you take a look at this tile here, where the seam is to the wall, you can tell that this is bigger than this one down here. And taking a tape measure and measuring to that seam, that's about seven and a quarter. And then if you go down here, that's about six and a quarter. So that is telling me that this is an inch out. And what I would like to do is make it even right here because any type of flooring that I do, especially if it's square like this or if it's planks, you're gonna be able to tell and it's just not gonna look good. So in order to make this the same size as that in this hallway, I wanna measure off of the new framing I have here. That's about 36 and an eighth, a little over. And then if I move down here, I have just about 35 and a quarter. So about an inch and an eighth difference. So what we can do is this is gonna be strictly cosmetic. All I'm gonna do is add to this, tear this drywall off and put a new piece of drywall on to make it even. One thing that's worth mentioning with this wall is that if you look here, you can see that the trim is a little smaller than it should be. That's because I had to mud this wall quite a bit right here because it's just not a perfect wall. So something happened here where I really had to mud this up. So I don't wanna go too close to this trim when I put this drywall in because I don't wanna have issues with trying to make it even with that trim. I don't wanna mess with it. So if I look for a stud, I can tell right here there's some nails. So hopefully there's a stud right here what I'm gonna do is figure out where exactly that stud is by making a little hole here and finding it. That way I know where I can cut my drywall half on and take this out to put a new piece in. So let's investigate. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is get this piece of baseboard right out of here. I'll end up putting a new piece here. And I have the same issue right here where I had to mud over this so I'm just going to be careful I don't want to mess with that too much so I'm going to cut it with a knife cut all the caulking out of there same thing right here against this trim I try not to disturb too much of what's here right now okay yeah look at all that mud And that definitely feels like a stud. Now I can take my handy oscillating tool. Love this thing. As you guys know, if you watch my channel, uh, and I'm going to cut a little square out here so that I can find out where that stud is. Aha. I don't remember that, but it looks like there is 3 8 drywall and half inch drywall here. So that's something we might have to deal with. I'm gonna find this stud. So when I take my tape, I wanna measure. There's insulation in here, so this is just sound insulation. I can feel the stud right here. I'm gonna try and get my tape in there. And I can tell that that is the stud right there. So I'm trying to hold my tape straight this way. And it looks like holding on the edge there that the stud is about four and five eighths this way. So I can hold my tape four and five eighths and make a mark. Now when I make that mark, four and five eighths, that is just the edge of the stud. Um, what I want to do 
is actually cut this way three quarters of an inch because the stud that's there is an inch and a half, three quarters is half of that. So I wanna be half on the stud so I have something to attach my drywall to. And this mark looks like it's about over three inches away than, from this. So there must be more than one stud there. So hopefully it doesn't have a break up there. We'll find out, but I'm gonna mark this right here, three quarters. Now I'm gonna go up the wall in the same position and do the same thing I just did. That's my mark. I'll plumb that up with my eye. And I say right about here, that's where I wanna make my next hole. Hmm. See, that's interesting because now this is only half inch. So there's something screwy, I don't know what. I do the same thing with my tape, just over five inches right here. And then I'm gonna measure off of that three quarters. Now I could use a board that's nice and straight that goes all the way to the bottom, but I am going to take my four foot level and make a mark all the way at the top and then the bottom, make my mark. Something like that. Now I have a straight line all the way from the bottom to the top. So I'm gonna take my tool, I'm gonna cut the top here, and then I'm gonna cut all along this line. By the way, if I didn't have this tool, you could just use a knife and score it several times. But you should have this tool. It's awesome. That's a pretty decent cut. Now I can take this drywall off. By the way, I'm not doing this entire wall because first of all, it's just a lot of work and I don't want to mess with that door. Uh, where it really counts is right here where you're really going to see it. So I just want to make that a little bit better with as little effort as possible. I know this seems like a lot, but like I said, it's just cosmetic and all it's going to take is some two by fours and some mud and a new sheet of drywall. Let's take this down, see if we find any surprises. I don't think so because I did the remodel on the bathroom, so we shouldn't have too many surprises. Knock on wood. Studs, perfectly half on. I like it. Okay. Okay, so I thought that that was three eighths drywall and quarter inch drywall, but as it turns out, and I kind of remember this, it's actually just as much mud as I put on here, about three eighths inches of mud. You can see this is just half inch. And then as you go this way, you get more and more mud. So obviously I was trying to correct that when I did, when I finished this for the bathroom, this piece was missing because I moved the door. So I was trying to correct that. So what I'll end up doing here is I'm gonna bump this out so I don't have to do as much mud. And then I can just tape and mud over that. But everything else looks good. I'll just clean up these nails and fix this framing. So our first goal is to make sure we match up evenly with this. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we are gonna mud this, but we wanna get it as close as possible. Uh, you might notice when I push on this, it's a little loose because there's no screws right here. So first thing I wanna do is put some screws in here so I get an accurate measurement of this distance. So I know what to do here because I am gonna add some furring strips, basically some shims to make the new drywall even with this drywall. So let's screw this down. 
Got myself a new toy. Drywall gun. All right, I got a bunch of screws in here. The drywall's nice and tight. Down here, you can see I ended up cracking it. I tried to put a screw right here after, and I guess I just missed a stud. So I got one here. We're gonna, like I said, mud this whole thing, so that's okay. No big deal. So now we wanna measure this so we can match it up. And what I'm getting is about five eighths. About five eighths right there. Everything is pretty much five eighths until you get to the top. And it looks like it goes to about half inch. And I remember that too. When I was mudding this, I pretty much faded it out this way and stopped because I basically was just fixing all of this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bump that out up there. Um, I'm gonna cut that at the ceiling so I can get basically a shim behind that drywall and make all of this five eighths from the framing. So I'll put an eighth inch spacer right here, furring strip, shim, whatever you wanna call it, including one at the top that goes behind the existing drywall. And I know that all this will be even when I put my new piece of drywall in. Okay, there's a seam right here. I can see this is starting to move like that. Now we have a crack. Well, new plan. Because there is a seam right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop my furring strip about here, and then this'll dive back to half inch. Then when I mud it, I'll just make sure to put a little more mud up here. I got some cracking here, and I can tell that as I do this, this is starting to move this way, but this is not moving, so, it's just not gonna work the way I wanted it to. So I'm gonna reattach this tight and the drywall will meet up and this will be even and I'll just add an extra layer of mud. Okay. Furring strip in, looking good, half inch, half inch, just want to check it all the way, half inch, I stopped it right here, that's just about a half inch, and then the drywall will go back to the original stud, and match up with this, half inch. All right, now let's do this piece. So before what we had was one inch difference when I measured the finish to this framing and the finish to this tile. So now that we have this piece where it should be, I'm gonna measure first to the framing. I actually have a line here that goes even with this framing. So measure right here, 36 and a half. And then over here, 37 inches. Now I'm gonna go to the tile, see what that looks like. It's seven and three eighths, and then eight inches. So when I measure from this framing to this framing, it's telling me that I need to add a half inch furring strip here. And when I measure from this framing to the tile, it's telling me that I need five eighths. So what I'm gonna do is split it in the middle and I'm gonna do a 9 16 furring strip from floor to ceiling. But I wanna check one thing first. I wanna make sure that this is plumb because if it's not, let's say it goes this way a little bit and in order to make it plumb, I need to add a little bit on the bottom or vice versa, I might have to rip the furring strip from 9 16 to say 3 quarters of an inch at the top to make it plumb because I want this to be plumb. Let's check it. 
somehow, some way, it's perfectly plumb. Nice. So I can rip that furring strip even at 9 sixteenths. Nine sixteenths. Looking pretty solid. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here, so I just held this to the original framing. Nice and even. Uh, this has two layers of drywall. So when I do the kitchen, I'll figure that out. Um, but I figured I'd play it safe and hold it to the other framing. Okay, we are almost ready for drywall. Now what I want to do is take a level and hold it on this framing, hold it on this framing, and measure that distance to that stud. And do that in a couple different spots on the bottom, probably four different spots to see if it's all the same. Hopefully it's all the same and I can just rip a piece to that width and attach it to that stud. Three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. I like using a stapler if I can, so that way when I do the drywall screws, I don't accidentally hit a screw that I used and it pushes it out, it's annoying. So with this, there's less of a chance for that to happen. Now we're ready for drywall. So I'm just gonna do this in one piece so that you see how it's laying here. This is actually gonna be the floor, that's gonna be the ceiling or vice versa. Uh, the way I like to cut drywall is the first measurement is 31 and three quarters. That's how wide it is. So I like to measure from the bottom. Mark that here. The benefit to that is that you have a smaller piece up here. It's easier to handle and the bigger piece will be sitting on the floor. 31 and three quarters here. So you mark both ends. Then you take a chalk line. Snap it. Very carefully, take a utility knife and nice and easy, cut this line. Steady hand, takes practice. And once you cut that line, I'll hold your drywall up and give it a tap on the back right at that line that you just cut and it'll break. And then you take your utility knife and cut the back side. There we go. Put this piece somewhere because we won't be able to use it. Now, if you were cutting a bunch of drywall, I would recommend to try and cut the length first because you could use a T square, which basically is a four foot long square that sits on the top of the drywall. But this is one piece. I forgot my measurement. 94 and a quarter. So I'm just gonna mark it. 94 and a quarter at the top here. 94 and a quarter at the bottom. And I'm gonna hold my tape like this. I could use a straight edge obviously, but this works too. Just cut it the same way you did the rip. Hey, before I throw this piece in here, I've marked where the stud is in the middle right there and on the bottom. And obviously I'll know where the studs are on the two ends. Let's put this piece in. really good okay I'm gonna have to bump the ceiling down anyway so I'm not worried about the gap at the top let's attach this it's so much easier with a cordless gun no cords getting stuck on a ladder I love this thing works good this is looking way better already. See how the tile's nice and straight? And that seam looks pretty good. Looks nice and even all the way. 
Sweet. So in order to mud this, what I like to use for the first coat is Durabond. It's this stuff right here, Durabond 90. It cures in a way that it is way stronger than regular mud. So I like to use that for the tape coat. And then after that, however many coats I need, I use this stuff. And I like to use this mesh tape only because it's really easy. Some people swear by paper tape, but this stuff is kind of sticky. So you just run it up the seam and cut it and then mud right over it. Uh, with paper tape, you want to put some mud on, then put the tape on and then wipe it off. And you can put a coat on over that as well if you want to. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do this, but this is my technique. Mix this up with some water with my paddle bit right here. And I actually did an entire video on how to mud and tape when I did the bathroom. So I will leave a link in the description over to that if you wanna check out lots more details. But I'm just gonna mud this up and show you how I do it. If you look right here, you can see that's how much I have to fill, maybe even some more to make this wall even more straight. I definitely need to do a lot at the top. It doesn't show that much when I do this, but you can see that this whole wall has this bow in it, which I'll end up skimming this a bunch of times. And the key is to do lots and lots of thin coats, depending on what you need to do. If you have a nice straight wall, you probably don't need to do more than two coats and you could be done. But in my case, this wall is uh, pretty funky. So I gotta do what I gotta do. That's it. And I'm not gonna do this corner yet because I am gonna drop this ceiling down to match the other ceiling. I'm just doing this just to show you how, how I do it. Everyone's got their own technique. It just depends on what works for you. Just like that, we got our tape coat of mud on. I did a little more at the top, so I gotta bump this out just a little bit more, but it is looking way better already. I am very happy with that. Can you guys tell? Nice and even? I like it. And this is after two coats of Durabond. That is way more straight than it was before. I actually snapped a line from here to here and used that as a guide. You can see the, the red up there. I know it's a little dark, but I used that. Two coats of Durabond came out to that line, left it back a little bit from that line so I can put more mud on there because I have to drop the ceiling to match it up with this. Um, and then I can do the corner tape and finish this, but I got to do a couple coats over this because with Durabond, you really can't sand it. It dries or cures really hard and you want to put more coats over that so you can sand it smooth. It's looking really nice. And of course down here, it looks perfect. And just like anything else home repair, you don't need to know everything about home repair. You just need to know how to problem solve and think it over and do things that are going to make it work. If you want to see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.